to absorb energy that is within the frequency range that they can, they're operating on. And they're operating on such a low band of, 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 of reality and, and uh, uh, vibration that they can only observe, uh, 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 absorb low vibrational energy, which we give them through low vibrational emotional um, output, hate, uh, fear, stress, all these things. Keeping us um, um, alive in this reality or, uh, constantly the survival mechanisms. Um, but if you get caught in survival as a, as a state of being rather than a response to a danger, then you are locking yourself into the reptilian brain, which is the, the genetics and the vibrational um, structure that these guys completely understand for obvious reasons. And if you look at society... From cradle to grave, we are constantly being given reasons to fear not surviving. Oh, the credit crunch. Oh, the um, uh, rising food prices. Oh, the war in Iraq. Oh, would Iran do a nuclear bomb? Oh, this stuff. Oh, what about the kids? Oh, my God. And all those feelings of fear, i.e. survival reactions, lock us into the reptilian brain, which is what they want us to do because then basically we come, become, to an extent, a high brain with them. This is another important area to understand many things that I'm going to uh, come through here. Um, they're energy vampires. They vampire human energy um, of a certain kind. And therefore we are manipulated to produce that energy, which they then absorb. It's their power source. It's their... Um, source of um, energetic power. They operate just outside of visible light, but when we project emotional energy, stress, fear, anger, hatred, that does, you can't see that appear in front of you when you feel those emotions because they're not w operating with invisible light. They're operating just outside of visible light at other levels of um, frequency. And so when we are feeling those emotions and generating that energy resulting from them, they are pouring out of us into these other levels of reality, which is where these um, entities operate, and they absorb that energy. So we have this world of apparent confusion because of the way that it operates. We turn out shite that we don't know what to do with. We want to know what's going on in the world. I mean, that's no problem because these pe people will tell you everything that the people that control and own their industry um, think is fit for you to know so you'll believe and see the world the way they want you to see it. It's called the news. And then be afraid. It's a world in which we must, we must be afraid all the time. We must be afraid of not having enough money, afraid of what's going to happen um, uh, in all areas of our lives, afraid of the future, afraid, survive, we must survive, or oh, we must always be in a state of fearing not surviving. It's a crazy, crazy world. But why? Why is it an upside down, lunatic world that we live in? People might say, oh, it's, it's all, um, it's all a coincidence just happen like that. Well, I would say after 20 years of this that it is coldly calculated to be like this because of the outcome that it gives those who are manipulating society in this way. And it's not just one level. There are multi-levels to this conspiracy. Yes, there's dark suits sitting around the table and, uh, and, and orchestrating this to an extent, but there's still the gophers playing it out. It goes much, much deeper and we'll go there as we go along today. The reason we are confused about the world and everything that goes on in it is because we don't have the coordinates. We don't have the coordinates from which to uh, see how things fit together. I remember I was on the Isle of Wight ferry once, and what it does, it comes out of Portsmouth Harbour, it goes along the coast a little bit, and then it turns out and goes across to the Isle of Wight. Well, it was so foggy on this day that you couldn't see the land here, as you normally could. So you're going along, and you just see fog. 
And after a while, it seemed to me and others that it was just going straight. And I thought, this sodding thing is going to France. What's going on? And I said to one of the crew, what's happening? This is, this is not going the right way, is it? And the next thing you know, the Isle of Wight Pier appeared in front of us. It had actually gone absolutely the right way. But because I didn't have the coordinate in which to make that, uh, sense of that, I was completely lost in the direction I was going. That was so symbolic of the way it works. So I'm going to go through a lot of coordinates today. Because when the coordinates are put into place, then what happens becomes, or what is happening, becomes totally blatant as the dots connect. We are often offered our greatest gifts magnificently disguised as our worst nightmares. Because we are what we are at this point, not despite what has happened to us, nice, not so nice, and all in between, but because of what has happened to us. That's what's brought us to this state. And there was a, there was a time in my life, like everyone else's life, when I was, a, um, uh, shall we say, aware of how people saw me. You know, as you do when you're a teenager and then you grow up, you're, uh, even older, you, you're always saying, you know, how people see me, and you're on the telly, and, you know, oh, I like, oh, people like me, and all that stuff. And you are, in, in other words, you are, um, you are uh, looking for external approval, because that helps your insecurity. When I went through the extraordinary levels of ridicule that I went through in this country, in the 1990s particularly, it was a nightmare. I couldn't go down um, any place in Britain without being laughed at, ridiculed, all that stuff. And yet, what it did was clear me completely, or as much as I'm aware of, of that um, need for approval. Of that, here we go. Fear of what other people think of me. That's what it did. So, so many of the why me's, um, we really ought to ask, why me? Why does it all happen to me? Great question. Why does it always happen to you? Because it's here that the power is. When we realize this is where the, the, the projection's coming from, then if we change this, the projection, the holographic physical experience, must change in line with the change in the projection and therefore our life changes. But it don't change out there, it changes in here. And, and my experience of life now allows me to continue to take ridicule and abuse and all that stuff, but I don't give a damn anymore. I don't give a damn. It's changed my reality. <laughs> Having this serve the higher reality instead of being the governor, dictating reality. And to do that, we need to start being at peace with this terrible crime of being different. If you don't want to be different, or you're not happy with expressing yourself as a unique expression of all that is, a unique point of observation within um, the infinite mind, then stay out of the right brain. And, and don't even think about transformation because that part of us that wants not to express that uniqueness lives in there. That doesn't want uniqueness, it wants structure, conformity, rules. I like rules, I do, I love them. This wants to express uniqueness. This is me, I am me, I am free. I am a different uh, expression of all that is so are you, pleased to meet you. What do we say? Who are you? Oh, I'm a coal miner. Oh, I'm a journalist. Oh, I'm a 70-year-old person from Essex. No, that's what you're experiencing. Wouldn't it be great? Hello, nice to meet you. Who are you? I'm um, all that is having an experience. Oh, so am I. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? All right. That's what we are. So it's starting to let go 
this fear of being different, this fear of being different to the norm. Oh, what will my mother say? Or what will me bl- the mates at work say? Or what if I do? Well, I tell you what, this is my view, just my view, okay? If they, mother, father, family, people at work, blokes down the pub, can't respect your right to express the full magnitude of who you are, Sodom, mate! What's Sodom? <laughs> Bloody hell, all the, uh, my friends, they, they try to make me conform, they're ever so good. Oh, really? And all this is blood's thicker than water. No! No! Their families and, and parents and children and all that stuff, they can, they can have great connections and, and, and have a wonderful relationship. But just because they're parents and children and, and, and sisters and brothers doesn't mean they necessarily uh, do that. What we call brothers and sisters and all this stuff, they're holographic um, uh, projections. That's what they are on this level. We are consciousness. They are consciousness. We're all co- one consciousness. It doesn't mean that, that one consciousness is more special or, or, or in relationship to another one. And so we have to conform to that one thinks because they're our parents. Sod that. Respect me, respect you. Everyone's a winner. Tell me to live the life you want me to lead, to lead uh, on your bike, darling. This is, this is, this is what it takes to, to move out of suppression into freedom. And you're not kind of being horrible about it and saying, oh, you know, horrible and that, that business. You're saying, if you can't... Uh, respect my right to be who I am, then you're just going to have to move aside because I am going to be who I am, whether you like it or not. You can respect it or you can not respect it, support it or not respect it, but it's happening because this is me. And it's, you know, it's amazing when you actually take these situations on, how other people around you actually do start to, to come towards you and say, okay, I see it. And if they don't, well, they don't, fair enough. I'll see you on another dimension. We'll talk about it.